Hello, and welcome to a brand new section, Combining Pandas Objects. In this section, we will learn how to append new rows to data frames and concatenate multiple data frames together. After that, we will compare President Trump's and Obama's approval ratings. Also, we will understand the differences between concat, join, and merge. At the end, we will see how to connect to SQL databases. Now let's move on to the first video of this section that deals with appending new rows to data frames. In this video, we will begin by appending rows to a small data set with the lock indexer and then transition to using the append method. A wide variety of options are available to combine two or more data frames or series together. The append method is the least flexible and only allows for new rows to be appended to a data frame. The concat method is very versatile and can combine any number of data frames or series on either axis. The join method provides fast lookups by aligning a column of one data frame to the index of others. The merge method provides SQL-like capabilities to join two data frames together. When performing data analysis, it is far more common to create new columns than new rows. This is because a new row of data usually represents a new observation and as an analyst, it is typically not your job to continually capture new data. Data capture is usually left to other platforms like relational database management systems. Nevertheless, it is a necessary feature to know as it will crop up from time to time. Now, we will first read in the name's dataset and output it. Let's create a list that contains some new data and use the lock indexer to set a single row label equal to this new data. Here, the lock indexing operator is used to select and assign data based on the row and column labels. The first value passed to it represents the row label. Names.lock4 refers to the row with a label equal to the integer 4. This label does not currently exist in the data frame. This assignment statement creates a new row with data provided by the list. As was mentioned, this operation modifies the names data frame itself. Now, let's run this code. So, you can see the row is added at the end. Now, if there was a previously existing row with a label equal to the integer 4, this command would have written over it. This modification in place makes this indexing operator riskier to use than the append method which never modifies the original calling data frame. The lock indexer uses labels to refer to the rows. Have a look at this code. In this case, the row labels exactly match the integer location. It is possible to append more rows with non-integer labels. Any valid label may be used with the lock indexing operator. Regardless of what the new label value actually is, the new row will always be appended at the end. We have the new row appended to the data frame. To be more explicit in associating variables to values, you may use a dictionary. Also, in this step, we can dynamically choose the new index label to be the length of the data frame. Let's execute this code. Check the appended row at the end. A series can hold the new data as well and works exactly the same as a dictionary. This code shows a little trick to dynamically set the new label to be the current number of rows in the data frame. Data stored in a series will also get assigned correctly as long as the index labels match the column names. You can see that we have added the new entry successfully. These operations all use the lock indexing operator to make changes to the name's data frame in place. There is no separate copy of the data frame that is returned. In the next few steps, we will look at the append method, which does not modify the calling data frame. Instead, it returns a new copy of the data frame with the appended rows. Let's begin with the original names data frame and attempt to append a row. Let's add the next set of code. Here, the first argument to append must be either another data frame, series, dictionary, or a list of these, but not a list like the one we used with the lock indexer. Let's see what happens when we attempt to use a dictionary with append. So, we could say that using a dictionary of column names mapped to values isn't enough information for append to work, as seen by the error message here. 
To correctly append a dictionary without a row name, you will have to set the ignore index parameter to true. This error message appears to be slightly incorrect. We are passing a data frame and not a series, but nevertheless, it gives us instructions on how to correct it. So let's pass the dictionary with the ignore index set as true. This works, but ignore index is a sneaky parameter. When set to true, the old index will be removed completely and replaced with a range index from 0 to n minus 1. For instance, let's specify an index for the name's data frame. You can notice the change in the index for this output. Now rerun the code from the previous step. You can see that we get the same result. The original index is completely ignored. Let's continue with this names dataset with these country strings in the index and use a series that has a name attribute with the append method. Here we use the name attribute with the len method. The append method is more flexible than the lock indexer. It supports appending multiple rows at the same time. One way to accomplish this is with a list of series. Let's accomplish this with a list of series. We define the two series, S1 and S2, and then append both of them. Now, small data frames with only two columns are simple enough to manually write out all the column names and values. When they get larger, this process will be quite painful. For instance, let's take a look at the 2016 baseball dataset. This dataset contains 22 columns, and it would be easy to mistype a column name or forget one altogether if you were manually entering new rows of data. To help protect against these mistakes, let's select a single row as a series and chain the to dict method to it to get an example row as a dictionary. Next, clear the old values with a dictionary comprehension, assigning any previous string value as an empty string and all others missing values. Let's run this code. This dictionary can now serve as a template for any new data you would like to enter. So, you can now implement different ways to append new rows to data frames.